National Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum, Cooperstown, New York. Twelfth Annual National Baseball Hall of Fame Film Festival, September 23rd, 2017. Life is never easy. It will give you moments in the sun and throw you life's curveball that changes your own perception of life. It's what you do in those moments that truly show who you are. What do you do in life's toughest of moments? You persevere and you keep swinging. For the Powell family, life's dark storm was tested. The journey captivated and inspired millions of people by standing together in life's biggest of battles. Now will forever be in Cooperstown's archives. My name is Danny Torres and I traveled all the way from New York City to be with the Powell family and I'd like if we could just take this moment to give a round of applause to Mr. and Mrs. Powell and Ryan Powell. <laughs> from a text message from former All-Star Sandy Alomar Sr. to a woman who at the time was living in Canada, Shelly Kostick, who had a actual, she actually had a tumor in her sinus area up in the left lobe. Thanks be to God, it was benign. To her contacting Ryan Powell through Facebook because she saw what you're about to see in a few moments and said to her, you have to meet Danny Torres, yours truly. Interesting enough, I have never met Shelly Kostick in person yet, but yet Ryan has. Ryan and I communicate through Twitter, social media, to eventually him coming to my school, my high school in the Bronx, to speak to my, my students. To then finally, this past summer, I covered my first spring training of the New York Mets in Port St. Lucie, so I had an opportunity to meet Mr. and Mrs. Powell. Or as they like to say, Danny, you call us Wendy and Terry. But now, we're here in Cooperstown as a family. And I can't think of a better time to be with that extended family of mine especially what's currently happening in Puerto Rico. And I do ask you if you can help in any way or form, any fashion, donation, food, whatever it may be. But Terry, you said something in this short film. You said there are nine innings, 27 outs. But this particular film that you're about to watch, this short film, you guys hit a grand slam. And that grand slam was that currently, right now, Wendy Powell is cancer free. So I am so pleased and thrilled that that is the case for Wendy Powell. And Ryan, I don't know what to say on what you did for your parents, especially your mother. A moving tribute that will last forever because guess where? For now on will be in the Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, New York. And that's to be applauded and to be commended. So ladies and gentlemen, before you see, and I want to make sure because we always get variations of the title, one more game from on. Ryan, I'd like you to come up for a moment. Now Ryan, I do believe you know this, that Mike Piazza, the, pitch, the position that you played as catcher was inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame. And that was in 2016. So guess what, my friend? It's here. You have the official media pin from the Baseball Hall of Fame 2016. That is your gift, my friend. And I thank you for allowing me to be a part of history to the Powell family. Thank you very God much. God bless you, my brother. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, ESPN presents, make sure we get it right, one more game for your mom. A little over a month away now, but one scout in that Orioles organization 
He's going to find it absolutely impossible to top what he did for his mom earlier this spring. Ryan Powell's baseball playing days, they didn't end the way he wanted them to. So what did he do? He rewrote the ending. Not for him, but for his ailing mother. David Lloyd has the story. It's been three years since Ryan Powell retired as a player. But to understand how he found himself back in uniform and playing in an Orioles minor league intra-squad game, one must first know how deeply baseball is stitched into the fabric of the Powell family. His first toy was a baseball bat. He was always into baseball. It's been a constant part of our lives. It's really at our core. Uh, when, I, when I think of my family, I think of strength. I think of um, you know, everything that we've been through together. He's went through the process. He's went into independent baseball. I mean, he's, you know, he's uh, low pay, slept in cars, you know, whatever it is to, to go out and, and uh, search for the dream. In 2009, Ryan was a catcher in the independent pro leagues when he had Tommy John surgery. Then, two years later, he tore both his labrum and rotator cuff. In 2013, he secured a tryout with the Orioles. But after letting him go, Baltimore hired Ryan as the head of their independent league scouting. His playing career reinforced a life lesson. We can't give up. Uh, there's nine innings and there's 27 outs. And in some ways you can relate that to the battles we're going through now. Last June, Ryan was back home visiting his family when things took a devastating turn. We were sitting there at uh, having lunch and I looked up at my mom and her, the right side of her mouth started drooping. I said, Mom, are you okay? She couldn't really respond. And we rushed her to the hospital where they said, um, they, they thought it was a, they, you know, they thought it was a mini stroke. But I felt that there was something they weren't telling us. Well, the next morning, they sat us down and said, your mom has a brain tumor. Soon after, Wendy Powell had surgery. The tumor was removed, but the cancer was malignant. A cancer diagnosis. It's like, a, it's like a bomb that keeps going off in the family. Yeah. What impact have you seen it have on Ryan? Uh, he's having trouble. It's real problematic um, because he, he's an emotional kid. But it's, uh, it's tough. There's no question about it. While Wendy was going through chemo and radiation, she voiced a wish to Ryan, a wish to see him play baseball one more time. So in February, Ryan put on the gear and caught a bullpen session. The simple video intended for his family and friends exploded on Facebook. Instead of you coming, you coming to see us, we want to bring the field to you. The story made its way back to his employer, the Orioles, who gave the go ahead, allowing Ryan to play in front of his mom one final time. One day he came home and he said, Mom, you want to see me play again? And I'm going to go out with the Orioles. And I said, what? And she had the biggest smile on her face. To be able to give my mother that again is a, is a moment I'll never forget. On March 29th, Ryan Powell stepped back on the diamond in front of family and friends as a gift to his mom. He had one at bat. When I got up to got up to bat, as I was walking up to the plate, I looked over at my mom. I just took in that moment. I'll never forget it. And that big smile, and I, you know, I got in the box. And of course, I stood up. At the uh, fence, I couldn't sit down. I saw a pitch that I liked, and I hit it hard. And uh, as I was running first, you know, as I looked down, I knew that it was going to be my last, at, my last time on at first base. And it just, it, it was just the most special moment. And not many people get the opportunity to do that. Good job, Ryan. <laughs> you did good, honey. I love you. 
This is yours? <laughs> Where did you get to this? Fantastic stuff from David Lloyd, and uh, we are very pleased to welcome in Ryan Powell here on Sports Center with us. Uh, first thing I got to ask you, Ryan, how, how's how's mom doing? Mom's doing good. She's doing fantastic. She's got a big smile on her face. Uh, happy to uh, let everybody know that she's resumed her treatments. And today at physical therapy, she actually took her first steps with her cane. Wow. So she's all smiles and uh, couldn't be happier. My gosh, that's incredible stuff. And I, I got to imagine that, that what you did and, and seeing you on Sports Center, I mean, that's got to lift her spirits as well. Tell us why she is just such an amazing inspiration for you. Uh, it, it's been, it, it's been our, our whole lives. We've stood together. Um, we're family. You know, we, we really want to define the word family and, and be an inspiration to families that are going through these battles. We understand we're not the only ones that go through this. And uh, it, it, it's very sad. Uh, but we, you know, we stand together and uh, we, we want to do whatever we can to help people out. How in the world were you able to stay in there in that batter's box? You know your mom is right there. She stands up to watch. How are you able to, to pay attention, stay zoned in, keep your eye on the ball, so to speak? Well, as, hey, as, as she gave me all the strength in the world um, through my life, it's my, my turn to make sure I give her that same strength. So uh, I, I, knew, I, I knew when she stood up, uh, it was a very emotional moment. And uh, I, I knew I had to have that same strength that she's in, instilled in me to give her that same exact strength back. Certainly came through there. We're seeing the, the swing time after time. Perfect swing, made Thank great you. contact with the ball. Uh, tell us the story of the bats that were used in that game. Actually, you know, when I found out when the Orioles decided that they were going to let, let me do this for my mother and my family, I, I knew there would have to be something, there's something bigger. There had to be something, something bigger that we can do here. And I decided to team up with Victus, the bat company, um, a very good bat company in Major League Baseball. And they made 15 bats, uh, Major League caliber wood. And we decided that I would use all the bats that day, whether it was in batting practice or in the game, and uh, have, have me sign them along with the 25-man roster of the Baltimore Orioles and send them off to 14 different charities all over the country and one for my mom. Mm. Wow. So uh, it's uh, so she's got it already. Got it the was, bat. It was a, I'm sorry. Does she have the bat now? Yeah, actually, I actually brought it today just uh, wow. just to show you that uh, the entire Baltimore Orioles organization uh, signed the bats. It was a very special moment with the organization. Um, I actually had a chance to speak with all 25 of the players, and it was a very touching, touching time. Um, Something really stood out when I was talking to the entire team. Uh, I asked, he, he, I asked if, if you've been touched by cancer in your family or somebody that you care about, raise your hand. And it was a very powerful moment when each and every hand in the entire clubhouse raised. Mm. And um, what better to bring families together in biggest battles than to use the, the national pastime, baseball. I'm sure you, your mom, your whole family, uh, inspirations to them. Uh, as they get opening day underway right now in Baltimore. Uh, one more question for you. Yeah. What in the world are you going to get your mom for Mother's Day after this? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, mean, I, haven't, gone, I haven't gone that <laughs> far, but uh, <laughs> uh, we're, we're hopefully going to have, have her walking by then. That, that's going to be that, that's going to be something very special for us. And um, she's going to get some she's going to get a lot of roses. She's Boy. definitely going to get a lot of roses. Well, send her one from us as well. Hey, we, better yet, we'll just send it from here. from Bristol, If we can get it out of the snow here oh, in the Northeast. Uh, <laughs> Ryan Powell joining us from down in, in sunny Florida. Scout for the Orioles and uh, fantastic story playing one last game for mom. Ryan Powell, send, send your mom all the best, and thank you for joining us here on SportsCenter. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, Chris. I appreciate it. Thank you. Let's switch over to uh, Ryan Powell for a moment. Obviously, coming back and playing very emotional for you, but talk about it from a physical standpoint. 
you know, your career had come to an end essentially because of bad luck and injuries. You hadn't played for a while, and now you've got to get up there. It's, sure, it's an intra-squad game, but these guys are young, you're playing against. They're pretty good players. I imagine it was pretty physically demanding to have to come back even for the one game. Absolutely. Uh, actually, it's, it's kind of funny. Ryan, want to come, you want to come back and play one more game for your mom? And I said, absolutely. He said, do you think you can do it? I said, hey, can I, I, still, I stay in shape, you know? Yeah. I, I can do this. I can make sure that I can make this happen. And um, I do want to take a second to I mean, thank big Danny Torres, um, who introduced us. He's an incredible person. I can thank the Baltimore Orioles organization for allowing us to have a game like that. Um, Ken, Ken Qualls, Fred Ferreira, um, Rick Peterson, um, and ESPN crew. You know, David Lloyd and our producer, Jenna Contreras, and, um, and a special person, Steve Bartlestein, with behind the scenes, none of this would have happened without him. He's an incredible person. But uh, in those three weeks, I probably took 3,000 swings um, just to get ready. Uh, it had been a couple of years since the CFS, yeah. well, there's no way to really uh, prepare for that. But uh, you know, they threw me into the fire and you know, hit the ball hard. Were you a little sore after the game? Actually, no. No, I was, okay. I was a little surprised. But no, I wasn't yeah. very sore. I was more, you know, adrenaline was very high, and just so emotional being able to do that for my mom. How far did you hit that ball? No, it was about uh, 380. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe 72. Yeah. <laughs> when you take us back to that day, how, how were you feeling physically that day? You know, going through your own, obviously, battle with cancer. Uh, I, I know it was very emotional, but what was your what was your physical uh, well, excitement. Um, nothing but excitement. Um, by you know, going to um, to watch him play. A long time. And uh, so we we went, watched him hit the, the Jesus out of the ball. <laughs> and uh, it was it was just phenomenal. Um, but the day that I found out I had cancer was certainly a different issue. Yeah. Um, we. Uh, Thought it was a stroke, and um, the doctor came in and said it was brain cancer. And ever since then, I I just make a conscious effort to not let it affect me. How long a period of time between the initial feeling that it was a stroke, and then they realized no, it's it's a brain tumor? How long how long did that? It was a day. It was just one day. Mm -hmm. It was yeah. a day. Uh, they told me that. It, uh, it was just um, in there for two weeks, if that, <coughs> and um, it was astounding. First thing I did when I got out of the hospital was stopped at the fun shop in Stewart, Florida. Um, but uh, it was amazing. I, I, I made a conscious effort, and, and everything you read about cancer is negative. I mean, there's nothing positive about it. But it was it was amazing that I I could just uh, click on a switch. Let's take some uh, questions from the uh, audience. Questions for any of the members of the Powell family or for uh, producer Mike Farrell. Just raise your hand. We'll be uh, happy to call on you, uh, Terry. You want to get your thoughts uh, as you were watching this uh, from the side? What what was going through your mind? Yeah, it, it's really amazing the strength of family. Uh, that strength is, excuse me, that strength has been uh, something that's really held us together. And remember that uh, one thing, excuse me, one thing that I, that I always think about is everybody hears about the cancer being a, a battle. It's a war. You know, one road, cancer, next thing, where did blood come from? So now you're over here, you got a lot of it. It's a war. So it takes a family to win that war. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us how you're feeling right now? You're free of cancer. Yes. How do you feel? I feel pretty good. Um, I have neuropathy. I, I never heard of neuropathy before this, and 
it drives me crazy. It's, it's tough. But I go into the doctor's office and there's people sitting everywhere with neuropathy. I never even understood it. Um, but uh, tell us exactly what that is. Yeah, it, it's a it's a nerve disorder. Um, if like I said, if it wasn't for neuropathy, I would be just fine. Um, but it, it's it's uh, it's something that they don't quite understand. I mean, I I take medicine for it, and uh, the medicine makes me sick as well, tired, uh, you name it. Uh, but um, my doctor is um, is working with me. I'm writing a book. I I've written two books, and I um, have. Uh, uh, some information that I'm working on. Um, What's the name of the book? Um, a piece of my mind. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. To the Powell family, what role has faith played in your story? I think it's a great question. Um, it's actually very deep rooted. <clears throat> we have a lot of faith as a family, and um, you know. Even her doctor, her, her doctors can't explain why she's doing so well. So there's really something to it, and I mean, they even call her a miracle. You know, there, there really, there are miracles out there every day, and it really does happen. And I'm looking at one right now. In the back. So, so for me, I hear you say there's nothing good from cancer, and, and from my perspective, you are what's amazingly good about cancer, and the, and the millions of you that fight that. Sucky <laughs> disease every day, and, and so being. Final question for our group, and I'm going to direct it to Ryan Powell. You're a scout for the Baltimore Orioles. Tell us a little more specifically what you do on a day to day basis. On a day to day, um, other than, you know, when when this happened, I did move back here to Port St. Lucie with my family um, in, in the area because you know I wanted to be around my family more to be able to help out. But um, on a day-to-day, -day, as a scout, I do, um, I mean, a lot of it's work from home, but because my territory is all over North America. So I have all independently professional baseball teams all, all, all over North America. And then I also do international special assignments. So, um, you know, if I see a guy that needs to be, needs to be seen, I'm flying out. Yeah, you know, I'll get a lot of video, things like that, maybe some confirmation. You know, hey, this guy's five for ten in the last last three games, the two home runs. This guy's hot. Yeah. So maybe maybe it's time to take a look at him. Our thanks to uh, Ryan, so Wendy, and Terry Powell. So, I'm sorry. I was just wondering, can you tell us who your best pick was? Oh my God. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, well, you remember Sandy's last year? It was he, he's a very interesting case. He, uh, we got him out of the Pecos League. Um, we, we actually got him for next to nothing, and he ended up being hitter of the year in the or organization. He had 356 with 20 home runs, 77 RBIs, and you know, and he we didn't didn't cost as much and for the organization. But he's awarded himself a very fantastic opportunity for what he's done. Our thanks to members of the Powell family. What better way to bring family together in their darkest of hours than to use the national pastime as a compass? Thank you to all the special friends in and out of baseball that always sincerely ask my mother. From scouts to managers and coaches to players, each and every single one of you will always hold a special place to our family. When it comes to our biggest of battles and families are involved, it doesn't matter what's on the front of the jersey. Each and every single one of you know who you are. Thank you.